Increasingly, in the tourism industry, we are seeing the emergence of bubbles. Bubbles that have everything inside that the tourist desires. Bubbles that keep us trapped away from the outside world. Bubbles that allow greedy, multinational conglomerates to thrive and for honest, hard-working local people to be forgotten. Bubbles are bad. Are you in a bubble? Today I'm going to talk to you about the concept of enclave tourism and I'm going to tell you why it could in fact see the rise of the death of our holidays. Keep watching to learn more. Let's start at the beginning. What is enclave tourism and what does it have to do with bubbles? Well enclave tourism is essentially tourism that takes place in a space that is segregated from the community outside. So it's in its own bubble. Enclave tourism implies a conscious decision to segregate tourists from the general population. It is usually in the context of an all-inclusive environment, such as a cruise ship, hotel or resort complex. Enclaves are enclosed and self-contained physically, socially and economically. This means that tourists have barely any reasons to leave the enclave. And enclave tourism is found all over the world and it comes in lots of different shapes and sizes. So let me give you some examples so that you can recognise when something is indeed enclave tourism. Destinations such as Sharm el Sheikh in Egypt or the Costa Blanca in Spain and southern Turkey are popular for enclave tourism with their large number of all-inclusive resorts. In China, holiday resort complexes are extremely popular and whilst the price of food and drink is not typically covered in the way that it might be in Europe, the concept is just the same. The tourists visit the resort which has everything that the tourist needs inside, meaning that there is little or no reason for anybody to step outside. When tourists embark on an enclave tourism holiday, they are typically segregated from the local people. They will often be collected at the airport by a representative and transported to their hotel in a bus. Here they will have access to a range of facilities such as swimming pools, spas, beaches and gyms, as well as food and drink establishments and entertainment, such as kids clubs, sporting events or entertainment, evening entertainment, etc. Sometimes the price is inclusive too, meaning that tourists can indulge to their heart's content. For the tourist, there's no need to leave the confines of their enclave, as everything is provided for them inside. Sounds good, huh? Likewise, the cruise industry is one of the biggest culprits of enclave tourism. Cruise tourists have everything provided for them on board their ship. Whilst they will disembark to make use of features offered to them at various destinations, such as beaches or tourist attractions, they will spend minimal money and have minimum interaction with any members of the local community. Okay, I hear you. You're thinking, this sounds great. I sit back, relax, put my feet up. Perfect. Well, it might be quite good for you, but it's definitely not for others, and let me explain why. The negative impacts of enclave tourism actually far outweigh the positive impacts in most cases. The reality is that local people give up their land and their resources in the name of tourism. They have high hopes of improving their job prospects and their economy, of using the money that's made from tourism to build new schools and improve healthcare facilities. Tourism really does have the power to change people's lives for the better. But this can only happen if tourism is sustainable. And enclave tourism is not an example of sustainable tourism. The reality of enclave tourism is that the vast majority of money made is given to greedy multinational organisations who take that money back to whichever country it is that they are based in. The seller who walks along the beach selling ice creams isn't allowed into the bubble, that is the enclave tourist resort. The person who carves handmade souvenirs can't sell to the tourists inside the resort if they don't come out to see what she has to offer. The taxi driver can't take the tourists places if the only time they require transport is when they take the foreign owned bus company's transfer to and from the airport. If you choose to visit the Gambia, 
you will come across something called Bumpsters. If and when you decide to leave your tourist resort, you will be greeted with dozens of these so-called Bumpsters. These are men who work on the streets selling goods and services to tourists. These men, who once had reasonable incomes by selling the likes of fishing trips or taking tourists to local restaurants in exchange for a finder's fee, now fight over the few tourists who do choose to venture outside since the onset of Enclave Resorts. In Sharm El Sheikh, the people there no longer have access to the beaches because the coast has been almost entirely privatised and these beaches are now closed off entirely to those who are not paying to stay in an enclave resort. People have switched their entrepreneurial efforts of starting up and managing their own tourism related businesses to employment as waiters or cleaners in said holiday resorts where they are generally paid a meagre salary. In Phu Quoc, a beautiful island off the coast of Vietnam, the paradise island of white sand beaches and, and dusty palm tree lined roads is fast becoming a concrete jungle with obtrusive high-rise hotels on the beachfront and large amounts of privatised land. It is predicted that most local tourist businesses will cease operation as soon as the many foreign-owned resorts that are being built at the moment are fully operational. In some cases, in places like the Maldives and the Caribbean, as much as 95% of income from tourism leaves the country again through economic leakage. In other words, the destination makes very little money from tourism. In fact, enclave tourism is one of the biggest contributors to the negative impacts of tourism. The reality is that whilst it's great to relax in your resort without a care in the world, the impacts of this for the wider community are pretty big. Enclave tourism helps feed greedy organisations from the West. Enclave tourism is helping to widen the gap between the rich and the poor. Enclave tourism is causing resentment towards tourists from local populations. Can you really sit around the pool eating an ice cream that you bought from your resort complex, knowing that if you bought that exact same ice cream just outside, you would be helping to improve the lives of others? I know I couldn't. Do you not feel at all guilty if you are using the land, water and other resources of the local destination, but you're giving them nothing back in return? Or perhaps you didn't even realise this, but you know now. The problem is that many people do not realise the extent of the problems that are caused from enclave tourism. From tourists staying in their bubble and not leaving. Ultimately, this kind of tourism is not sustainable and at some point it will need to come to an end. There is only so long that host destinations will continue to feed these Western corporations whilst watching their own people suffer. So I urge you, Next time you book a trip, just think about where the money you're spending is going to end up. If you do want to stay in the Enclave Resort Complex, then choose to take a taxi to and from the airport. Not only will this probably be a lot faster and often cheaper, but you know that your money is going to a local person. Make an effort to leave the bubble once in a while. Yes, enjoy your pool time. But there is a whole world outside of that Enclave that is waiting to be explored. Go outside and buy your souvenirs. They'll almost certainly be cheaper there anyway. Meet some local people. Take a long walk along the beach. Just get out. And avoid excursions organised by your resort and instead book it via a local tour company. It will usually be cheaper and more authentic anyway. There are so many things that we can do. Let's do them.